Hello everybody, it's Pastor Joyce from Christ the Cornerstone Church. Uh, I have a message and a prayer for you tonight and hope everything is well in your world. Uh, know that we're keeping you in our thoughts and our prayers all the time and we're here for you. If you should need anything, you can certainly reach out to us uh, either through Facebook Messenger or through our church's website, ChristCornerstone.com. Um, got a message for you tonight. Um, been thinking about my yard out here. I have um, some birds that come and uh, throughout the day, morning, afternoon, early evening like now. And uh, a variety of birds come out here and I throw out different peanuts. And uh, I have shelled peanuts because that's for some of the squirrels and or the blue jays. And then there's regular peanuts uh, for the uh, cardinals. And there's other um, orange birds, which I don't know what they're called. Uh, starlings, you name it. Whoever's in my yard, uh, they get to uh, feast on whatever I put out here for them. So I'm out in the backyard and you may be hearing some chirping. I just put some peanuts out earlier, but it reminded me of the fact that birds of a feather flock together, right? Uh, we all know that saying, and it's something I really see with the birds. I mean, in the morning, very early, uh, very often, whoops, there goes my camera. Okay, the wind's out here as well. Um, but anyway, in the mornings when I'm out here, the pigeons come and uh, squirrels sometimes come a little bit after that. And then there's doves and then the cardinals and the blue jays and the blackbirds and so on and so forth. So, but I noticed they come together. And so, you know, it reminded me of uh, us people. We people, we tend to also birds of a feather flock together. Most of us hang out with the same people, uh, people we know that's our comfort zone very often. Um, and I think that's all fine and good. You know, you have your certain folks that are like you and you're like them and you have uh, various interests that are similar. And so you stick together around that. But I don't think we grow in that. I don't think that's the way Jesus operated. In fact, if anything, Jesus was always around other people uh, that many people would say, what are you doing with those people? Uh, so throughout scripture, we see Jesus calls us to a different, I'm worried about the wind, a different type of relationship that we can have with one another. Okay, this is fun. All right, so I'm gonna keep on continuing. If you heard my sermon from Sunday morning, we just keep on keeping on. I'm just gonna try to move out of the wind a little bit. Oh, look, a nice little rain, uh, light sunshine there coming through. Anyway, back to my point. <laughs> um, here's the thing. Jesus hung out with people that were very often considered outcasts, considered, you know, the less than, the not equal to, uh, people that had all kinds of varying uh, backgrounds and, and lifestyles and problems even and very often they were uh separated off from everybody else and you kind of see that even in scripture you know you hear about the tax collectors the lepers you hear the difference between the gentiles and the jews the greeks um and we see throughout scripture that the religious people particularly with all so often trying to keep people out of the temple they actually have various gates at in the old testament times and even in during jesus's life where certain people could go in certain ways and that's not what jesus wanted he made one entrance into the temple through him and he said come follow me and he took people through the sheep gate and oddly enough uh you know that what you think was that's where the sheep belong well jesus looks at us as sheep and so he always did things and showed that everybody were all equal in god's eyes we're all the same and we're all part of the human family and that we don't only have to stay in our own little groups our own little labels our own little um whatever you want to call them um Clicks, I guess is a bad word, but I guess that's sometimes what it seems like or feels like sometimes, right? That means that we're in and they're out sometimes. And so there's an us and a them. And that's not God's way. We see in scripture that in, in Luke chapter 14, verse 12, there's some people flying by. Uh, in verse 12, it says this, Jesus turned to the host and said, when you put on a luncheon or dinner, don't invite your friends, brothers, relatives, and rich neighbors, for they will repay you by inviting you back. Instead, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Then at the resurrection of the godly, God will reward you for inviting those who could not repay you. 
So this is looking at it in two ways. First and foremost, every relationship we have with one another or another person doesn't need to be based on what we get from them if we give them something. Jesus told us to turn the other cheek. Jesus told us to, if somebody borrows your shirt, give them your coat too. And don't worry about getting things back. So that's one of the philosophies that's in these particular scriptures. But he's also saying, don't just invite people to your banquet, to your dinner, to your whatever situation you're in, whatever uh, social event you may happen, or even especially religious event you may have in, be happening. Invite those that may not ordinarily be invited. And maybe they're not like you. Maybe they're di a different gender. Maybe they're a different age. Maybe they're a different race. Maybe they're a different religion. Maybe they don't have any religion at all. Everybody should be welcome at the table that we all sit at. And it's something important for all of us to do in that we need to truly come out of our comfort zone, step away from just being in certain groups, and whoever comes into our life and sometimes we can even intentionally look for other people that are not like us, somebody younger, in my respect, someone older, someone well-to-do, someone not so well-to-do. It makes no difference. People that have problems, people that have it all together. If you have some of those folks, let me know who they are. <laughs> or regardless of that, the point is this. All of us need to be birds of a different feather. Meaning all of us as, as people that go through this life, particularly as a Christian, I believe this, and as a pastor, I believe it also, everyone is welcome into God's kingdom. Everyone is invited there. And we need to also make people feel comfortable and a part of us, even if they're different from us, even if they are a bird of a different feather, <laughs> we can still flock together. So think about that. Think about your life and who you can invite that's different from you, who you can get to know. You know, if you only hang around with people that are just like you, then how do you learn anything? How do you grow? How do you reach out and understand somebody else? How do you minister to people who are different if you only hang around with the same and you always get, you know, you're looking for the same kind of thing all the time in terms of their relationship with you. It's challenging, I know, sometimes because we don't always understand each other. That's part of our human condition. But God is calling us all to be birds who flock together and we don't have to all be the same birds that flock together. We can, we can also flock together with birds of a different feather is what I'm saying. And I pray that you'll do that and think about that and reach out to touch someone else that you have nothing in common with and see how much you can learn and grow and, and reach out to them and show them God's love. And you'd be, you'd be surprised how much you can learn from somebody else who's not like you. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather. We thank you for your blessings, Lord, of all the people in our lives, Lord. And I ask that you help us stretch out of our comfort zones, that we also seek to find and be in relationship with people who are, are a different feather from us, Lord. We ask you, God, that you bring to our church and to our relationships and to our lives people who are not like us, but we can still love them teach them, be with them, and find more in common with them and learn through the differences that we have with one another, that we're really all the same, all in need of love, acceptance, and unconditional love that you give us, God. I ask a blessing upon everyone who's watching this night. I pray for anyone who's going through difficult times, that you would guide them and direct them, that you would be with them, comfort them, God, and help us each reach out of our comfort zone and touch the lives of others, people we may never ever have come into contact with before, but help us reach out as you did, Lord Jesus, so that we, the godly, in the resurrection can be rewarded for touching the lives of others as you've touched ours. In Jesus' name, amen. So God bless you, we love you. Um, I guess, 
tomorrow night, if you're in the, oh, I'm sorry, Wednesday, Wednesday night. I think tomorrow's, tomorrow's going to be Wednesday. Uh, so uh, tomorrow night we'll have a Bible study at the church. We're, te we're teaching on the Holy Spirit. So if you want to know more about that, you can join us at 7 o'clock. Um, also, there's a Zoom Bible study. If you're interested in that, go to our church's website. Look for the Zoom uh, link there. You'll see a, a, a tab on our website. You can contact Amber and Deacon Dawn uh, to join on that uh, through Zoom. And um, I pray that you'll be with us Sunday morning at uh, 10 a.m. We're back inside the church. Uh, we're doing it safely, wearing masks, uh, with social distancing, but it's an opportunity to still gather safely in God's house. And I hope you'll join us for that uh, Sunday mornings. We open the doors at 9.30 a.m. and come on in and see how many birds of a different feather you'll find at Christ the Cornerstone Church. God bless you. We love you. We're praying for you. See you soon.